Hey, this is our second part of the video about red flags for a manager. Hopefully you are not depressed after first one. So before going to the video, put like to this video. It means a world for me. So, so, so nerdy. If an engineer brings up hard conversation, make it about you. Yeah, you know, some managers are doing that stuff and I don't know, maybe they think that this is best practice. Sometimes engineer brings a hard conversation and they start speaking about themselves, like how it makes them feel. For example, that's very funny when engineers providing feedback to the managers and then these managers are not accepting feedback and start telling that this engineer makes them sad. No, you are not there for this. If people bring hard conversations, you need to solve the problem or you need to clear the air. You as a manager need to solve the situation. If engineers bringing hard conversation for you, that's hard conversation for you. And you need to get as much as possible from this conversation and make your people as happy as possible. If engineers talks about compensation, let them know that they are greedy. And this is stupid. Seriously, we all working for money. And if people think that they are not paid well, you need to be transparent with them. For example, you need to tell them that it's possible to increase their compensation or it's impossible. So people will understand what to do with their life. Maybe they will search other job opportunities where they will be paid better. Maybe they'll decide to stay because they like the team. However, questions about compensation should be transparent and understandable for everyone who's interested in that. Show favoritism on the team. Make sure that everybody knows that somebody is more important than they are. The worst thing which your team can feel is favoritism. Because in this case, they don't see what is their future in this team. They don't know if it's possible to be promoted, is it possible to get more interesting projects, and maybe they need to look in other places. Previously, we were discussing that managers need to distanciate themselves from the team, even if they are your friends, even if you are trying to build relationships with them. You need to keep this distance, because favoritism is horrible. This is something what people will think about all the time, this is something what people will speak with each other about. So favoritism is the worst thing you can show as a manager. Overpromise what team can deliver. If they are not delivering, blame engineers. Of course, some engineering managers want to show that they are very effective, they can deliver more than other engineering managers and so on, and then they are overpromising. And when something happens, they start blaming engineers because this is not working, they haven't done that, they spend too much time on other tasks. However, in this case, the engineering managers have no clue what to do to solve some tasks. That's why they are overpromising. Or maybe they feel when they were young engineers, they were delivering way more than this new generation of engineers. No, it's not working like that. If you promise something, make sure that you discuss this with people because you are responsible for delivery. You are responsible for successful commitments and you just can't blame engineers. You can blame only yourself. Set deadlines without talking to the team. Guestimates are the best. Yes, sometimes you need to provide guesstimates. However, these guesstimates need to be done with your team because when everybody commit on something, everybody deciding that this thing will take that much time, that means that if we are failing, we are failing as a team. Not we are failing because stupid manager did wrong guess estimation. If someone recommend change to the team, ignore it. They don't have your experience. Yes, sometimes when people recommending some change to the team, maybe it won't be taken. But this is your responsibility to speak with people and tell them why you are ignoring or why you are not taking their change. However, in most cases, when people see some problem and they are doing the recommendation, take it into account. Maybe they have bright idea. Or if not, at least provide details why not. Delegate nothing because you cannot trust your team. Delegation is scary. No, really, delegation is scary. We have a video about delegating, but it's super important. It's important for growing your people. It's important to scale your people. It's important to build the trust. By delegating, sometimes you are not getting more time because you need to mentor, you need to support uh, people to whom you are delegating. Yes, probably you can do the work faster, but you need to do a lot of other tasks. So delegating is an only way how you can scale yourself. Give the projects and task to the most senior engineer. Don't let these juniors do interesting stuff and grow. 
you can trust them. Of course, it's super easy to have one very good engineer and give them all the tasks. But there are so many bad things about that. First of all, your junior engineers who won't grow, they will leave you. No, seriously, it's easy for junior engineers to find another job because you're not paying them huge salaries so they can find the job elsewhere. Second, you need to grow them because you need to increase effectiveness of your team. And third, your senior engineers will burn out and they will leave you because you are asshole manager. Rely heavily on metrics. Measure everything. Measure even how much time these people sit on their chair. And this is not a joke. There are some companies which are counting how much time people are sitting on their chair. There is some Chinese company and they're using AI to understand what's happening through video feed, through their survival cameras. Can you imagine that? I remember there were companies which have this time tracker on your computer just to make sure that uh, you are working eight hours per day. This is worse. No, you need to measure a lot of things because you can't manage what you can't measure. But be mindful. Your people are free people. You as a manager need to create safe environment. And when people think more about metrics which you are calculating, they are not using their creativity. You won't have good team if you put measures on everything. Please, please, don't count line of codes. Please, that will be the worst decision in your life. Ensure that your team doesn't use social networks. They don't message to their loved ones and so on. They're here for work. You know, most of engineers who are going away from office to their home, they still sometimes think about problems they're solving on their working place. And you're not paying for that. So let people have some time to rest. And it's not your job to see how they're resting. Maybe they're checking social networks, maybe they're messaging to their friends, but this is their time to rest. If you're joining the company where social networks and messengers are blocked, please don't join this company. Or maybe this is very secret services, secret company and so on, so probably then join because it's probably very interesting. But if you are in normal, obvious company, please never block messengers. People sometimes need to speak with their closed ones, loved ones, they are waiting for some news and so on. Don't get them stressed at least about that. Send a strong message that work is more important than a family. Work is your family. Well, well you know that it, it's not gonna work. Even if you won't send this message, people already sacrificing their time to spend in the office, not with their families. And only very small amount of people will make decisions that work is more important than family. Well, if somebody sending this message, it's obviously bad work. So they will still select family. Never update your onboarding documentation. Tribal knowledge makes us family. Yeah, that's the problem of documentation. Actually, any documentation, because any documentation has their own life cycle. In the beginning, it's created, then it needs to be updated, and then sometimes it needs to be deleted, and then sometimes it needs to be deleted. Especially it's important for onboarding documents. Newcomers who join your company are dependent on onboarding documentation. They are dependent on information which you adding there. So if your documentation is outdated, they will need to search for information. They will need to speak with a lot of other people uh, to understand what is happening. Instead, you can invest into your onboarding documentation and they can become effective without a lot of efforts. Encourage your team to over-engineer things. They all need to know that we are super smart. This is actually very interesting problem because you will mostly manage smart engineers and smart engineers reading blogs they're watching some videos and so on and they tend to try cool stuff or they try to implement things which uh, will prepare your system to everything and even nuclear war however we are here to solve business problems and in most cases business problems are being solved by uh, less complex engineering systems. Joel Sapolsky, creator of Stack Overflow, many, many years ago spoke about uh, architecture astronauts. Somebody who are not solving business problems, but they are solving whole huge family of problems. I really recommend you to read this topic because it's, I think it's changed my life and it made me better professional. So yeah, remember, we are here to solve business problems. We are here not to over-engineer simple things. If you have conflict with somebody, use your anger. They need to know who's right here. Conflict resolution is one of the things you'll practice every day at your work. There are some days when emotions are taking over us and we can say bad things 
we can say things which are not helping to solve the problem, or we can be angry on people. When we are providing too many emotions, it's, it, it can bring us to not funny conversation with the charts and other stuff. So every time remember that we are at work and we are trying to be professional and we are here to solve problems. We are not here to make sure that somebody is right and somebody is wrong. And when you start using your anger, you always lose. So if on any moment you feel how anger gets to you, it's better to stop conversation, ask for 10 minutes powder and go and, I don't know, breathe, drink, don't think about the work. Anger is not solving anything. Conflict resolution is about negotiating and finding middle ground. And I'm sure you can be great on this. So for now, that's all red flags which I wanted to discuss with you. I hope that number of red flags for you is not that big. But if you have some, good luck in resolving them. Thank you for watching this video and see you in two weeks. So, so, so nerdy.